Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay from Lottie and Albert and this video is going to be all about how you can find more time in your day for your crochet. I'm going to be talking about different things such as time blocking, habit stacking, being prepared, crocheting in public and stopping scrolling and how all of these things can help you to yeah, make more time in your day for crochet. So the background behind this video is I up until this point have been um, working four days a week, I also have three kids and alongside of that I have been running a sort of crochet side hustle, I don't really like that word but you know what I mean. And one of the things people say to me quite a lot is how do you manage to fit it all in? So I thought I would share with you some of the tips and tricks that I have found to be really effective in making more time in your day for crochet. But if you aren't running a side business or you don't have kids and you want to make time for your crochet because it's something you find it hard to prioritize because life is busy and there's lots of other stuff, housework and general work that you need to do, then this video is for you as well. So if you do enjoy today's video, please do feel free to give me a like or leave a comment or even share the video because it really helps spread the crochet love and if you're new to my channel then I am making videos every week all about crochet and crafts from tutorials to podcasts to videos like this. So without further ado my first tip for you is mindset. Now bear with me on this one because honestly we can't magic more time out of the air can we? But I think one of the things that we will all agree on is that crochet isn't just a creative hobby. It is that and it's enjoyable and it's lovely and it's fun but I think for a lot of us it's also a form of therapy and self-care and something that can be very mindful. So like I said this isn't all about cramming in more crochet in order to have a side hustle. It's also about making time for something that's actually really important and helps a lot of us in a lot of ways. So when I say that tip number one is mindset, what I'm really asking you to do is let go of any guilt you may feel or any um, hang-ups you have on prioritizing yourself and prioritizing crochet in that way. Because if it really is important to you, then you should be carving out time in your day for crochet. And if you've already passed that hurdle and you're with me, then that is fantastic. But yeah, tip number one is definitely adjusting your mindset and saying to yourself, this is important, this is me time. Um, and then once we're there, we can move on to our other tips without feeling guilty. <laughs> now, tip number two is time blocking. Now, I read a book at the start of the year by um, James Clear, I believe his name was, called Atomic Habits. And it's a really fantastic book that I highly recommend if you are interested at all in building good habits or breaking bad habits or just the psychology behind habits. Um, one of the things that he recommends that I have found really helpful is time blocking. So the basic concept of this is to set aside a chunk of your day to work on something or a certain time in your week to work on something. And for a long time, I really hated the idea of organizing my day to the nth degree or having certain time slots for different things because I like to think of myself as a bit of a free spirit and the idea of planning things like that made me feel a bit like But actually, one of the things that time blocking does really well is it forces us to focus. And I think one of the things with crochet is that, as I said, although we've all accepted that it's very good for us from a sort of mindful point of view, it does feel a little bit selfish to sort of sit down and crochet when there are other things to be done um, or an endless list of things that always need doing. And what time blocking really helps is shift your uh, mindset to view that time as your crochet time. So I'd be really interested to know in the comments if you do have a set time of day when you always crochet or a certain time in your week. Now if you have a busy family life or perhaps you're working full time then this time for you might be at the start of the day or it might be at the end of your day or perhaps it might be on your lunch break. Whatever works for you, my kids get up super early so for me the morning was never an option unless I wanted to get up at like 4am and crochet before they woke up at 5am. But the end of the day I always found to be a good time. 
And so if I were to say to myself, okay, between 7.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m., I am going to work on a crochet project or I'm gonna write up a pattern, and you sit down for that time, and it doesn't matter how much you get done, it's not about saying to yourself, I'm gonna finish X or I'm gonna complete this. It's just about giving yourself the time to work on that thing. And if an hour sounds like a crazy amount of time that you can't get out of your day, then just try 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Maybe it's on your lunch break. Maybe you don't take a lunch break at the moment, but you are allowed one and you can get away and find 20 minutes. And if you set that as your crochet time, you'll be amazed at how much you can get done. If you're able to do an hour a day, think about it, over the course of the week, that's like a full working day. So even if you aren't working at the moment and it's something you want to work towards from a business point of view, then fantastic. And again, I think just setting aside a time stops us from feeling guilty. And if you have a family, maybe a partner or children, and they come to realize that that half an hour before you cook dinner or that half an hour um, when you first sit down, when you get home, that's when you're going to do a bit of crochet whilst watching the TV, then they will come to respect that as well, I have found, because um, everybody knows where they're at. Everybody likes routine, even if our first instinct is to go, Mrr. planning an hour for free time or for crochet actually makes it happen a lot more effectively than if we just say to ourselves, oh, I'd really like to do more crochet. And you can apply this to any area of your life, maybe if it's exercise you want to prioritize or anything else. If you write down exactly what time and when you're going to do it, it is so much more likely to happen than if you just hope that if at some point you will be able to fit that thing in. The third tip that I have for you in order to find some more time for your crochet is habit stacking. Now this is another technique that I've borrowed from the book Atomic Habits. And habit stacking is a really interesting one because you're probably doing habit stacking in your day without even realizing it. And a key example, which I think um, the author uses in his book is washing your hands after going to the toilet. Now, even very young kids are hopefully <laughs> being taught this. So you go to the toilet and immediately afterwards you wash your hands and that is one habit stacked on top of another habit you don't really have to remind yourself to wash your hands because it's so habitual that you just do it and so one of the ways in which you can fit crochet into a day is if you're able to stack it on top of another habit and i feel like the most obvious one which probably a lot of you were already doing is when you sit down in the evening if you watch tv you then crochet and that might sound really obvious, but it is amazing how now when I sit down in front of the TV, it feels weird not to crochet. And obviously, as I said, I'm not about filling your life with busyness for the sake of being busy. But if you start to associate one thing with another, then it really helps to bring it into a day. But perhaps your habit stack isn't about crocheting while you're watching TV. Perhaps your habit stack could be when I go on a long car journey or when I commute to work, I crochet. And so you will never forget your crochet if you always do that same thing because it becomes a habit. So have a think and I'd be interested to know in the comments, are there any habit stacks you already do concerning crochet and is there a way in which you can bring that into your day? Tip number four ties a little bit into the habit stacking that we just talked about. And I'm calling this be prepared like a good boy scout because being prepared can really serve you in the long run. And I don't know about you guys, but again, I have found that opportunities to crochet for any length of time sometimes tend to be when, you, when you're in the car for a long time or when you're on your way somewhere um, or perhaps you are a mum and you're having to go to, I don't know, things like uh, tutoring with your kids or clubs or practices. If you're prepared and you can take some crochet with you, then you will always have something to do. And again, even if you're just picking up for 10 minutes, if you're doing that activity once or twice a week, it's amazing how much you will get done. And one thing that I've heard that some people do is they might have separate little crochet projects. So smaller crochet projects do tend to work well for this. And also, strangely enough, if you're working on something like a granny square blanket, because 
Okay, a blanket's a big thing, but if you're making all the granny squares first, do you see where I'm going with this? You can just be making one or two at a time and they're quite portable and small. Socks are another good one. I've had lots of people knitting socks in the cinema. I mean, knitters apparently can knit in the dark and crocheters. I feel like you have to see the stitch a little bit more, but socks is a good one. And I mean, use your imagination. Smaller things, smaller yarns, portable projects. Some people even will keep one project in their car, one project in their handbag, and then you don't have to remember to take one with you every time. You always have one on you. So you can take the bag, the project's in the bag. When you get an opportunity, you work on the project. So again, it's about being prepared. And if that sounds over the top to you, perhaps um, you're not quite as obsessed with crafting as I am. But honestly, we often find time to get out our phones and scroll on our phones. So what about if we just crochet in that time instead? And I also think that Again, let me know if you think I'm wrong. I think crocheting in company is less rude, certainly, than being on your phone or even reading because you can still hold a conversation. So often if we go to our in-laws for a long day on, say, a Sunday, and we have Sunday lunch, and then afterwards the kids are playing and we're sat having a cup of tea, I will crochet and I'll bring some crochet out. And nobody's ever said that they mind, so I'm assuming that they don't. But again, it's just being prepared, having a project on you and just fitting in five or 10 minutes and watching that blanket grow. Tip number five. Again, this ties in slightly to the tip before, um, which is crochet in public. And for a long time, this was something I didn't feel totally comfortable with, um, particularly before I started uh, in a creative job when I worked in a much more sort of office based role I was embarrassed to get my crochet at lunchtime whilst I was sort of sitting outside on the bench and I don't really know why because I enjoy it it's perfectly acceptable pastime and thing to do but it can feel a little bit embarrassing to crochet in public maybe if you're on the tube or if you're in your car but honestly do you love your hobby would you like to inspire others to do your hobby? Because I feel like that's all that will ultimately happen. Some people might think, what are they doing? What is that? Maybe that's something I can try. And do you know what? You're doing a good thing if you're spreading that crochet joy because we all know how much enjoyment we get from it. And I think it's only fair to spread it to others. So perhaps if it is something that embarrasses you, my advice would be to start in a small way. So maybe you're in a park, on a bench, and there aren't many people around, try a bit of crochet in public then. Because what this will ultimately help in the idea of this video is that if you're comfortable crocheting in public, then you will give yourself more opportunities to do a few rows when you're out and about. If you're waiting for a friend, if you're at dinner by yourself and you're waiting for somebody to arrive or you're waiting for your kids to come out of a club or some after school activity. Do you see where I'm going with this? Crocheting in public, people. I'm sure there is a hashtag or a movement or some other people trying to encourage this, but I feel it's a good one. Maybe, um, Maybe we all need to do a little bit more of it. And actually, I feel like crocheting in public is just a nice thing to do. Why do we have to sit in our homes and do it? Why can't we also enjoy being outside whilst doing our hobby? That is the beauty of yarn-based crafts such as knit and crochet. They are that much more portable. When I did a lot of sewing and used my sewing machine, you're very limited in places you can go. So what's the weirdest or the best outdoor place that you have ever crocheted? That would be a fun one to know. Tip number six I have for you. This is my penultimate tip. This might sound a little bit backwards, but if you want to make more time for crochet in your life, or if you want to increase your productivity and feel like you are getting through more projects than you are, then work on your whips, people. Work on your whips because one of the things that I am very guilty of, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this, is I am very good at starting new projects because 
they are really fun and really enjoyable and we all like starting new projects but ultimately <laughs> when i only start new projects i don't get that i get that sense of the nice feeling when you start a project but i never get the sense of accomplishment of oh look there's something i made on that shelf there's something i made on that sofa here's something i made on my body you just have a lot of wax in progresses and it can feel a bit uh, and make you feel a bit guilty and we don't want any of those feelings when we're doing a hobby which we are doing to relax and have a bit of me time so work on your whips because that will help you to feel a more of a sense of accomplishment and also it'll give you more satisfaction because you will feel like you're pro progressing through your projects and it will give you more momentum to start new projects but i hear you i know what you're saying working on whips can be boring especially when you've lost the love for a project so we're going to cycle all the way back to one of our first tips here which was habit stack habit stacking and also time blocking because these two habit tips are also really good for helping us finish our works in progresses so what i want you to do next time you go and work on a project before you work on the project you want to work on do 10 minutes on the project that you've lost a little bit of love for or isn't quite as exciting anymore and do that 10 minutes first and then you can work on your new project or weave in those ends for 10 minutes and then you can work on your new project and if you put it into a time frame so say to myself 10 minutes rather than I have to weave in all the ends on that granny square blanket which I made while my kids were at swim practice and is now massive and has a lot of ends it feels insurmountable and it puts you off and you're not in a good place but if you just say I'm gonna do it for 10 minutes then it's amazing how over the course of a week or two it will be done and equally by putting that time frame in and working on maybe a less preferred project before the project you're really excited about you're also creating a habit stack see isn't that good so the more you do it the more that you will naturally do it without thinking and by working on your whips in this way hopefully you will feel like you are getting more done physically you will see your projects progress faster and yeah i'm not telling you not to start new projects and honestly this is one of those instances where i need to follow my own advice a lot more but i feel like this is a really good way yeah to make more time for your crochet weirdly by doing the projects you don't really want to do and you can apply this um broad more broadly as well so maybe you want to do crochet but your house is a mess hello do 10 minutes tidying and then do 30 minutes crochet for instance and then the guilt is alleviated and your house is a little bit tidier but also you've done more crochet so uh that's a good habit stack for you guys too maybe i'm alone maybe you are able to crochet guilt free um but i don't know when you have three kids there's a, there's a lot of washing a lot i definitely spend more time folding washing than i do crocheting okay tip number seven and this is my last tip and that is stop scrolling i know that i love social media you may have found me on social media on instagram in particular i can waste hours and whilst that is where i find a lot of my crochet inspiration where i see projects that i want to wake make and where i talk to like-minded people who are also as obsessed as i am with crochet it is a fantastic place to be but i know and i suspect that some of you watching have found this too you can easily lose 20 minutes 30 minutes an hour just scrolling um, maybe it's not instagram for you maybe it's pinterest but you can't crochet and scroll okay there are things that you can do whilst crocheting you can watch youtube videos whilst crocheting you can listen to audiobooks whilst crocheting and you can listen to podcasts while crocheting but you can't crochet and be on instagram i mean if you can send me a video of you doing that because hello side note i did once try and crochet whilst on an exercise bike 
um, and also crochet with my arms up in the air because I felt like if I could crochet up here then I would also be toning my arms at the same time. It didn't work. Don't bother. I did see somebody crocheting um, on Instagram on a, what are those steppers called? You know what I mean, those stepping machines. She was doing a great job. Um, so if you're able to multitask in that way, then words on you. That is amazing. But yeah, stop scrolling or time block your time on Instagram. So, you know, we will enjoy it. Allow yourself 10 minutes, 20 minutes. I think there are apps if you have a real issue as I do, um, that can actually kind of kick you off. You put them on your phone and when you've reached your time that you've allotted for yourself, it either tells you or it shuts down the app that you're on. So uh, that's something to look into if you are interested in that. But yeah, I really loved reading before. Actually, it wasn't so much crochet as when I got pregnant with my first daughter, I found it really hard to concentrate on reading. And then obviously when I had a baby, the time for reading was few and far between. And then I got really into crochet. So again, reading did not get much of a look in, but for the first 25 years of my life, I really felt like reading was a huge part of me and my personality and what I loved. I worked in publishing, I worked in book publishing. Um, and so it's very strange for me not to read. And then, I don't know, about three years ago, I discovered audiobooks. I say discovered as if it was something that I myself invented. I mean I downloaded the Audible app and I cannot recommend audiobooks enough. If you are a reader and a crocheter perhaps you will resonate with this but you can't read and crochet but you can listen to audiobooks and crochet and honestly for me the experience of listening to an audiobook particularly if it is read by a good narrator which so many of them are now you get lost in the book just the same way as you would if you were turning the pages and reading. So I highly recommend audiobooks whilst crocheting. Podcasts as well. I love listening to podcasts. Um, I love listening to creative podcasts. I like listening to creative business podcasts. Um, so if you would like any recommendations, I'd be happy to do a list of creative podcasts that I enjoy listening to or sort of businessy podcasts that I enjoy listening to. I don't, I'm not a true crime fan, but I know there's a whole big niche of that. There's, I mean, you can find a podcast on anything. Um, I personally listen through the iTunes app, but whatever. My point is, YouTube's great too, obviously. <laughs> My point is, you can't go on Instagram and crochet, but the whole Instagram app and experience has been designed to keep you on the app for uh, as long as possible. And if we go back to where I was recommending you try and block out an hour of your day if you can and you'd be amazed at how much you can get done over the course of a few weeks. If you at that point were like, I can't find an hour in my day, I would also ask you now to be really honest about how long you spend on your phone. And I'm not trying to guilt you, like I spend a lot of time on my phone, but just think about it because maybe if you cut down that time a little bit and replaced it with something else like YouTube videos or podcasts, you can also then crochet at the same time. So that is why that is my final tip for you. I feel like I've covered a lot of ground and obviously some of those things overlapped, but I'd be really interested to know if you have found that interesting or helpful. And again, I really wanna stress, I'm not trying to advocate that people fill every second of their day or that this video makes you feel like you have to do more, 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 because that is really not my intention. I do think that crochet and crafting is so important for mental health and slowing down. And so in recommending these tips, I'm also hoping that people will be able to carve out some time in their day, guilt-free, or maybe it's not every day, maybe it's once or twice a week, but that you just give yourself permission to prioritize that. And maybe some of these tips will help you do that or they'll help you see the value of spending time doing those things. So let me know if you, yeah, if it has. I'd be really interested to hear. And let me know what you think of this video because it's a little bit of a different one, but it's been one I've been wanting to make for a while. And so yeah, I do hope you've enjoyed it. 
I will see you all next week. Um, I'll probably be doing a podcast soon where I talk about what I've been up to and what I've been making. And I have promised you all a giveaway because I've recently hit 5,000 subscribers. So if you've enjoyed this and you wanna check out my other videos, um, then please do so. I would love for you to consider subscribing to my channel. And yeah, there'll be a giveaway for subscribers on my next podcast, I promise. I even have the prizes now, so no backing out. Um, yeah, I hope you all have a lovely rest of your week and I will speak to you all soon. See you guys.